Hello world! Stay with us to hear one of the most amazing and exciting stories mankind has ever created. This is the story of a code, a secret word, or perhaps it is better to say a magical word. Abra? Abracadabra? Alakazam? No rush. Nope, none of those guesses were correct. Stay with us until the end of this story so that you can learn this magical word so that perhaps you will be able to make use of its magical powers yourself at any place, any time. After decades of conflict, bloodshed and mass killings all over the world, in 1945 the victorious nations of World War II decided that enough is enough. They decided to form a group to manage and control the world, keeping it safe and balanced. They also brought in the rest of the countries into their group, to the point where they now have got 193 of the world's 196 countries signed up. Its name, the United Nations, a big step towards bringing about global peace and cooperation. The most powerful and fundamental section of this group has 5 permanent members and 10 non-permanent members, and it is called the Security Council. All rise in honor of the Supreme Judges of the World. I got it, I got it. What did you get? I got the secret word. It's United Nations. Nope, you got it wrong. Listen to the rest of the story. The main jobs of the Security Council are as follows. Establishment of international conferences. Focusing the world's attention on important issues each year. Weapons control and establishing security. Maintaining peace. Human rights. Humanitarian aid and nation's development. Ending poverty. So what's the magic word? Hmm, hmm. Let me give you a few questions that might help you find the magic word. Can you tell me how many countries are members of this big group? That's easy. 193, as you said. Can you tell me how issues are voted upon and decided upon in this big group? Well, that's obvious. Democratically, by voting and figuring out the percentage votes for and against. Hmm. Suppose the United Nations member states wanted to implement human rights or destroy poverty in a country, then what would they do? They'd discuss it and then vote upon it, obviously. Hmm, suppose that the UN member states wanted to disarm a country in order to make the world safer, then what would they do? That's also easy. It would be up to those who have this role, the Security Council, obviously. Good job! But now, a harder question. If one of the member states, or even the Permanent Security Council members commit a crime, then what would happen? Well, the rest of the members would decide about that, obviously. Congratulations, though all of your answers were wrong. We are getting closer and closer to the magical word. But again, let's use another example so that you might find the word yourself. You have all experienced this, that sometimes everyone defends your rights and stands up for you, but just one person ignores you and even ignores everyone who defends you. Well, sorta. Once a gangster came and beat me up in front of all my neighbors, though they all then came and saved me. Yeah, same sort of situation, but with the difference that in our case, no one else is allowed to help you. Now, have you figured out the magic word? Yep, honorable judges. Hmm. It's the judge's verdict. Congrats, that's pretty close. But the magic word is none else than veto. Veto is a Latin word, which means I forbid it. This word was first used in the councils of the Roman Empire. 
Inside Article 27 of the United Nations Charter, we read Decisions of the Security Council on all other matters shall be made by an affirmative vote of nine members, including the concurring votes of the permanent members. Let's read this sentence carefully, including the concurring votes of the permanent members. This means that the permanent members of the council who have the right of veto are the final decision makers. The countries that have veto power are the United States of America, Russia, France, Britain and China. In addition to the obvious legal and practical problems, the veto power is unacceptable because the powerful nations in the mid-20th century made this law for themselves and have given themselves dominance and superiority over the rest of the world. The veto power within the UN Security Council allows the five permanent members, meaning America, France, Britain, Russia and China, to block whatever draft resolutions that they like. The word is used for the unilateral cancellation of laws and is therefore an unlimited power which can be used to prevent certain changes. The right of veto has been produced based upon the notion that peace is more important than equality. It is interesting to note that if just one of the permanent members of the Security Council vetoes, then the whole unit can adopt a decision. Many times, a veto of one of the permanent members has paralyzed the United Nations from being able to adapt important resolutions for international peace and security. Giving some the right of veto received much criticism from the rest of the countries from right at the start in the San Francisco Conference. This was because they believed that recognizing the right of veto blocks the very notion of equality between countries. But the five permanent members used the argument that they play the most essential role in maintaining international peace and security and provide most of the military forces and financial costs required. They believed that this is a legal and legitimate law since they are the ones who play the major role in preventing chaos and destruction around the world. One of the incredible and turning points of this story is that you, with simple research and analysis, are able to determine whether this justification was legitimate or not. If you search a phrase like the list of the wars after 1945 for each country, you will notice the major role that the veto power plays and will understand whether it is really for the purpose of bringing about global peace and security or not. The most used vetoes. Before 1966, the Soviet Union used the veto power the most. After 1966, America has made the most use of the right of veto. From 1966 to early 2015, the veto power has been used a total of 152 times. America has set the record with 80 vetoes, mostly related to the Middle East and Israel. As for the rest of the Big Five, well, Britain 29 times, Russia 23 times, France 16 times, and China has gone out of its way four times to ensure the security of the world. At the end of the day, the five permanent members of the Security Council, despite all the criticism they receive for this magic word, have threatened that if their veto power is not recognized, then there will be no United Nations at all. So now to our final question, in your opinion, has this magical word made the world a better and safer place?